I am going to explain a very important part in the atom, and it is called as neutron. It is called as neutron, and so as the main case, neutron. So neutrons are neutral in nature; they don't have any charge. They are neutral. They are neutral particles. They are neutral particles. That is, they don't have any charge. They don't have any charge. Neutral in nature. They don't have any charge. That is, no charge. No charge on them. This is the basic point. Neutrons. Now, neutrons were uh, reported very late. You have to keep in mind, neutrons were reported very late in 1930s, around 1936, and so it was uh, reported by James Chadwick. James Chadwick. James Chadwick was the person who reported that there is a particle present inside the nucleus, and he also adds that the mass of atom is due to mass of nucleus. Mass of atom. You know, a lot of controversies were going on, and you know, in the beginning, in the Thomson model, it was said that atoms are made up of only two particles, only positively charged body, and electrons are scattered here and there. Actually, uh, Thomson said that atom is positively charged body. There was no concept of particles. He said that negative particles are scattered. That's all. It was in Thomson's model. Then there was another you know, effort of scattering. This actually Rutherford and Thomson. Then Thomson performed again more and more experiments. You will see in your higher classes. And so then there was uh, the naming. Actually, electrons are uh, initially uh, they are called as uh, fast moving cathode rays. Fast moving cathode rays. And so. Uh, protons were called as anode rays. This is for your reference and knowledge. Electrons were called as cathode rays. Protons were called as anode rays because they were discovered by a special experiment, which is called as you no know, discharge tube experiment. So this has been something you no know, uh, more concepts. So discharge tube experiment. This charge tube experiment was performed by J. Thomson. J. Thomson was a you know, pioneer. So this charge tube experiment was performed by different scientists, and Thomson has contributed. And so after this charge tube experiment, there were uh, you know cathode rays. Initially, cathode rays were discovered. Cathode rays were discovered means You know, cathode means negative part, negative uh, part of the battery or cell or any uh, circuit. So it is negative. So cathode rays, then they were later on called as called as electrons. This is you know before 1930. Before 1930, you can imagine. Then there were Anode rays. Anode rays were named by Goldstein. It was named by Thomson. Anode rays, Goldstein, G O L D S T E I, Goldstein. So anode rays, anode rays, they are also called as canard rays. They are also called as canard rays. Or protons, canal rays, or 
protons canal rays or protons were there so discharge to the experiment was performed by j thompson and some more scientists so discharge to nothing but is a tube glass tube 1 meter long 1 cm diameter and it has very low pressure of the gas and when very high current is passed then there is the breaking of gas molecules gas molecules are broken and cathode rays and anode rays are produced so cathode rays are called as electrons thomson said then other scientists you know goldstein 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 discovered anode rays by changing the arrangement of electrons you will see near her glass so you know cathode rays anode rays see this this is discharge to an experiment this is you know a cylindrical tube side tube for the vacuum pump to suck the air here you know this is the you know arrangement this is high tension source of current very high tension high tension source means very high thousands around you know 10000 volts so let it be negative it be positive so this is cathode and this is you know so here side tube is made air is taken out and very little amount of air is passed air is left inside and then very high current is passed so on passing what happens this tube begins to glow just like we have you know in tube lights in our homes so tube light is a crt so this is called a c r t cathode ray tube to all must be knowing nowadays we have the pc with a, a lcd or led monitor you know monitors are lcd or led but still at different places there are the huge big monitors big monitors they are called as crt cathode ray tube so simply tube light you know uh, this television set you know old television sets very very bulky you know very heavy television sets they were crt so uh, this is for your you know extra knowledge so that you can learn the points so how do electrons were discovered how photons were discovered so uh, just it was historical point so i thought to explain this so cathode ray you know they were started from the cathode you know and they were in a tube you know so this is the cathode ray now goldstein goldstein improved this goldstein improved the uh, cathode ray tube and he had taken you know like this this again the same this is high tension source and here it is connected now this is negative this is positive but this is perforated perforated anode anode is perforated perforated means like this let this be metal metal you know this it has holes you know just like we have the seam in our home in kitchen to seal the flour or you know like this to remove the any you know impurity so this is the arrangement again get the side tube 
to suck the air very low pressure in this side this also cid very low pressure very, very low pressure tell the power minus 2 mm hg very very low pressure tell the power minus 2 mm hg you can imagine almost nil very very low pressure inside so again gas is there so gases becomes conductors this is very important point gases becomes conductor at very very low pressure here in normal condition we all have you know this wiring and electrical appliances in our home so we cannot have the you know electric shock unless until we test that any live wire but we pass by all the places but we never have the electric shock in air because here at the earth the air pressure is you know quite high it is equal to one atmosphere and it is it is around you know what 76 cm of mercury or 760 mm of mercury this is the atmospheric normal atmospheric pressure at the earth here it is very low now see how it is produced so again a cathode ray will go like this and so cathode ray will be absorbed by the metal plate like this and so this is the see and what happens it is irregular so there will be no formation of canals like this canals are formed rays they are coming out so these were the node rays node rays or canal rays node rays the canal rays these were cathode rays so children this is how you know in science the discovery the research takes you know you know decades because it requires lot of patience lot of you know expertise lot of you know uh experimentation many flaws are there you know demerits are there failures are there so uh, this is about the uh more how it was evolved uh this uh, the discovery of electrons were there discovery of protons were there by the discharge ex actually there was you know lot of confusion lot of doubt about the existence of some other particle initially right from the thomson model or other ford model or bohr model it was said that atoms are made up of only positively charged particles and negatively charged particles but when you know it was a uh, chadwick who said that in an atom there is one more particle because he performed an experiment and he removed you know all the electrons from an atom so he found that the mass of the you know the species formed by the loss of electrons is not equal is not equal to that of the electrons lost and it was almost double so he said that some particles which are neutral in nature particles of neutral in nature are present having mass or weight equal to a uh, positive charged particles but these particles are neutral the particles don't have any charge so thus there was the discovery of neutrons and it was by james chadwick now coming to back to this point this nucleus and this external nuclear part so this you know cell orbit so this is called as extra nuclear part extra nuclear part and this is nucleus now nucleus has protons nucleus has 
neutrons. Nuclear side, neutrons, nuclear side, neutrons. And together, these two, protons and neutrons, they are called as nucleons. They are called as nucleons. So nucleons are nothing but the sum of number of protons and neutrons. And here cells have you no know, cells have electrons. Electrons are for them in cells. So this concept of atom is called as nuclear model. This is called as nuclear model. Nuclear model of atom. Nuclear model of atom. Nucleus is the central portion of atom, and so this is a nuclear model of atom. Now I'm going to explain about the very important part isotopes. So the word isotopes are made up of iso. Iso means same. And trope means number. Iso means same and trope means number. So isotopes may be defined as different atoms of an element having same atomic number or different atomic mass. So isotopes may be defined as Defined as different atoms, different atoms of an element, different atoms of an element having same atomic number, same atomic number but different atomic mass atomic mass was you know different atomic mass or atomic weight was different now isotopes can be found in nature as well as isotopes are artificial or man -made. so isotopes are natural and artificial. Natural isotopes are very less in number. Natural isotopes are very less in number. Very few elements forms isotopes. Like, you know, hydrogen, oxygen, chlorine, uranium. So, limited number of Isotopes are found in nature. But artificial isotopes are, you know, any element can be converted into isotope. So any element can be converted, converted into isotope by artificial artificial transmutation transmutation means to prepare some new uh, particles or new substances so it is done by it is done by the bombardment bombardment of highly energetic highly energetic rays highly energetic rays on an element so isotopes can be prepared by bombarding fast moving neutrons highly energetic neutrons you know on any substance which is stable so
So this is about the you know basic introduction about the isotopes. Now I'm going to explain about the isotopes of hydrogen. So hydrogen has three isotopes. Hydrogen has how many isotopes? Three isotopes. First is protium. First is protium. Its symbol is H1 and 1. Second is deuterium. Deuterium H1 and 2. Third is tritium. Tritium H1 and 3. So three astrophes are there. Now see electrons, protons, neutrons. So electrons one because this atomic number, this atomic weight. So proton is one, neutron is zero. Here one, proton one, and two minus one is called two. Here neutron one, proton one, and neutron one. So see here, neutrons are different in number. Neutrons are different in number, and so. Similarly, many elements form isotopes like carbon, C6, C12. This is normal carbon. This is normal hydrogen. Protein is normal hydrogen. Deuterium, tritium, they are called as heavy hydrogens. So C12, C14. This C14 is found in nature. It is found in in very small quantity, very small amount. So this is about the uh, basics of isotopes. So now isotopes have many usage also. Usage of isotopes. So in treatment, in treatment of tumor, tumors, cancerous tumors. Cobalt 16 isotope is used to destroy the you know tumor of the cancer. Now then coming to second iodine 131 is the name you know atomic weight. Iodine 131 is used to treat Guaiter. You know, Guaiter, Guaiter is a disease which is due to the deficiency of iodine. Guaiter, you know, this thyroid gland is, you know, it swells. Then, uh, third is uh, chromium 51. It is used in treatment of blood cancer. So actually, cancer is treated by isotopes. Isotopes are highly unstable. They emit radiations which are able to destroy the you know, glands of cancer. Then in industries, industries to maintain Maintain quality of quality of products. Quality of products, you no know, thickness is maintained. You know, see, you will see in high classes how thickness is maintained, you know, by passing the you know radiations from isotopes and other side it is detected. So there is the maintenance of it is a very complex process. So is the maintenance of you know thickness. Now uh, one more point in research research programs in agriculture research programs you know, isotopes are used to study any plant disease or the growth of plant, flowering of plant. So this is one. 
Then in nuclear bomb, you know nuclear bomb, atom bomb. So nuclear bomb or atom bomb and generation of electricity. So which are the six very important applications? Electricity is generated. Electricity is generated. You know, electricity is generated by uh, this use of uranium two thirty five. Uranium two thirty five. It is a scope of uranium, and two thirty five. You know, when it breaks automatically, large amount of heat is generated, and as a result. Large amount of heat is used to uh, boil the water. Steam is produced. Steam is used to run the turbine, and so uh, current is produced. So this is all about the isotopes and the neutrons, and this application of isotopes is the first one.